is the Lions Unchained podcast, where the shackles of your mind are broken. There comes a time when we either embrace the truth or remain in darkness forever. The Lions Unchained podcast offers you the light of God's truth. The rest is up to you. Join Carl Joseph now for a powerful, life-changing word. Friend, welcome to part three of the birth, death, and supernatural fulfillment cycle spoken of in the Bible. Now today I discuss Joseph and David and even Jesus and how seemingly their dreams died for a season and then were later revived in God's timing. Friend, we have to trust God throughout this process. And someone once defined trust as this, giving someone the complete authority to destroy you, but at the same time being confident that he will never do it. Wow. That is absolute trust, friend. But God's not in the destroying business. He is watching out for us. He has our back. Someone also said this, trust means giving something now with an expectation that it will be repaid, possibly in some unspecified way, at some unspecified time in the future. Friend, As we conform to God's word and the character traits that he desires in our life and stay in faith and meditate on his word, we will fulfill the vision that God has for us in his timing and no one else's. I'd like you now to join part three of our session live because your fulfillment in this life is doing what you're called to do. And that's where real joy and contentment comes from. Knowing that you're in the right place with God, there's nothing greater. There's nothing greater than that. (laughs) This is Joseph right here. But he was unique because he had no moral failures in his lifetime. Joseph was faithful throughout. He kept committed to God's plan. Joseph had two consecutive dreams that revealed he would be a great leader in which the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed down before him symbolic of his father, mother, and 11 siblings, okay? That was where it was birthed. What did Joseph do? He's like, hey man, I had a dream last night, the sun, moon, and stars, they all bowed down to me. That went down well with his brothers. No, not at all. I mean, they were looking for an excuse at that point to throw him in the pit. And when he blubbed that out, it was like, dude, you are going in the pit after that. And so there was a real jealousy in the other brothers, amen, because Jacob showed favoritism towards Joseph. And whenever you show favoritism towards a child, you invoke jealousy in the other children. That's a fact. So it was birthed right here. Then it died. Joseph was thrown in the pit. You know the story. He was taken by Egyptian slave traders into Egypt. It took him about 13 years to go from the pit to the palace. But here's the thing. God uses circumstances, but he doesn't necessarily bring those circumstances. Remember, it was the jealousy and hatred that threw Joseph in the pit. I don't believe God put Joseph in the pit, but he used it to get to where he needed to be, okay? Now, there's some bad things that have happened to everybody in this room. If you've been living long enough on this earth, bad things happen, okay? But understand that God didn't send those bad things. I want you to release those things tonight as well, okay? That's life. That's a part of living in a sin-infested, cursed earth, okay? Once again, some theologians will say, God put him in the pit, and then he put him in the prison, and then he put him in the palace. No, God used those circumstances. I believe that those visions would have come to pass even if he didn't go into those places, because I believe God can do it. Wow, now that may have treaded on some toes there, but just chew on that for a bit. We must not rewrite our theology based on what happens to us. We go by what he says, amen? This is what the word says. We align our soul and life with the word. Joseph was elevated to second in command of the world at 30 years of age because of his faithfulness and humility, not taking matters into his own hands, resisting temptation from Potiphar's wife, etc. The guy was faithful all the way. He's somebody we can look up to. There are very few people like him. He was a man without moral failure. That's something to be admired. Now, David, did he have moral failure? Yes, he did. David the shepherd boy was anointed on the hillside. Scholars debate as to when that happened, but he was anointed by Samuel to be the king of Israel. So what happened at 17 years of age, let's say? Samuel came up and said, I pour the oil on your head, my son. You are anointed as king. 
You are anointed as the king of Israel. Okay, see you later. I got to go to Starbucks. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Bye. That's what it was like. Not Starbucks, maybe not. But the point I'm saying is that he was anointed as king, and then that was it. It was like, okay, what do I do now? I got all these sheep. I mean, I smell of you know what here, and I'm the king. What do I do now, Samuel? Right? God can tell you something grandiose, okay? But you've got to still get up and go to work the next day, right? There's some things that David had to learn at 17. He wasn't ready to be king. He had the anointing for it, but he hadn't stepped into the office yet. And there's a difference. Many people here have got the anointing, but they haven't stepped into the office of what God has called them to do yet. And what is that time frame being used for? He's polishing your character. How exciting. Amen. I just can't wait to get tested in patience again at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, that's how it is, right? You think you're pretty patient, and then it's like... Oh. So there's more testing, amen? But a promotion that is premature is, is not a blessing. There are people who have been promoted in the kingdom of God who have fallen morally very drastically and it's ruined their lives, friend. I'm not saying that as a critique. I'm saying it as a warning to us that we don't want to be elevated too soon because we have to have the character necessary to get there, amen? Think about it. Joseph was, what, 30 years of age. He'd been through so much testing. He had so much temptation and he was so humble that he just entered into that office at 30 years of age, interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh's like, who is a man endued with wisdom like this man? No, you are going to be the governor of Egypt. Praise God. Amen. Humility was his strength. Amen. Which leads me to tell you, I've written a new book and it's called, I am humble. You can too. Five easy steps. No, bad joke. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so David was on the hillside smelling of you know what. He's like, Lord, what do I do now? Just keep worshiping. Keep seeking me. Amen. He spent the next several years being hunted by the murderous King Saul in the caves and deserts of Judea. What is your leadership 101 training, David? It's being hunted by a murderer. That's your training. Wow, that's exciting, isn't it? But God can use some stuff in your life to chip away at those character issues even though he didn't send them, right? God's not causing Saul to murder David. That's nonsense. He's not causing that, right? But David finally became king in Hebron, the southern kingdom of Israel, for seven years in 2 Samuel 2.11. He then became king over all of Israel for 33 years. He was 30 years of age when he became king and he reigned for 70 years. In his own children's life, Amnon raped Tamar, and that invoked a lot of anger in Absalom. And when that happened, because David didn't chastise Amnon, that caused a rise up of rebellion in Absalom. So there was consequences taking place in David's life. There are sins that are passive, where we don't do what is right, and then we do things that are deliberately wrong. Okay, so you could say they're active and passive sins, sins of omission, things we should do. Okay, there are some things we should do and the Lord has told us many times. Okay, but there's some things, okay, that he has told you to do. And we're like, la, 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 la. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm scared. I'm scared, Lord. Don't keep going on about it. Friend, the Lord will put you on hold for several years if you don't do what he says. Ouch. That's a tough word. But it's really important that we seek him. Amen. David was quick to repent and quick to forgive. Our choices can stall God's plan or cause us to fall short of what he desires to accomplish in our lives. We can put things on hold ourselves because we're not obedient. Partial obedience is still disobedience, right? It's a salty word tonight, friends. But I'm trying to instill vision in you. And I'm trying to make you aware of the corrections that are going to be necessary to get there, okay? And some people are very close to getting there, okay? It doesn't have to be a 25-year message tonight, amen? <laughs> it can be a two-month message. But the more we cooperate with him, the sooner it's going to happen, right? Jesus, I didn't want to give an image for him. Jesus ministered in the temple at Passover for three days at 12 years of age. He's probably thinking, man, I got this word down. I know the answers. I'm ready to do my ministry. I'm 12. Let's go to the River Jordan. Let's get baptized. Let's cast out some demons. No, Jesus, it wasn't time for that. You had to do some carpentry for the next 18 years. Imagine being the son of God and doing carpentry for 18 years. Are you kidding me? That means that God the Father was the one going, you know what, you need to be exhibiting humility and character development yourself while you're on earth, amen? Think about that. Jesus, the Son of God, still had to go through the humility aspect. He still had to be taught these things. He was baptized 
in the River Jordan by the Holy Spirit. He put aside his deity and became an anointed man of God when he was 30 years of age. But he still had to build tables, chairs, okay? Carve whatever for years and years and years because God saw that it was fulfilling to do those things. Acts of humility, service. Before the power came, he was doing that, amen? He only ministered for three years. Think about it. What if Jesus ministered for six years? What about eight years? How much more could he have accomplished? But again, it was expedient for him to die and pour himself into other people. Amen. So why wait for the vision to come to pass? Why even bother with it? Sounds like a lot of work, Pastor. Well, the reason some of us are still waiting for God's vision to come to pass in our lives is because we're not yet transformed into his image to the degree he desires. But we shouldn't produce Ishmael's. We shouldn't get out of God's timing and do our own thing. That's not a good idea, okay? We can cause further complications by doing so, amen? This is me, this is me waiting, waiting and waiting for the thing to come to pass. Where's my wife? Where's my blessings, Lord? Where is it, where is it, where is it? We've all had those moments, amen? But in that time, we're growing up, right? We're learning patience. In the waiting, the waiting is not fun sometimes. Patience is waiting well, it's not just waiting and there's a difference. Like I said, a promotion too early is not a blessing. This process is called sanctification in the New Testament. It's a work of the spirit man through the soul. There's an article we wrote on the website, it is, is my soul saved? Is your soul saved? You're like, what are you talking about? In scripture, we are three parts, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit and soul are distinct. The soul is your mind, will, and emotions, okay? Your mind, will, and emotions are being transformed to the image of Christ Jesus, ongoing. That's an ongoing process. Your spirit man is born again the moment you receive Christ. That's when life enters into you. Then there's a process where your soul is being conformed to his image, amen? We're all in process. Pastor's still in process, amen? None of us are left alone. Those thoughts will be cast down. Those thoughts will be confronted and convicted by the Holy Spirit. It's a transformation that we need to embrace, okay? When people are asking us to go to the bar and get wasted, no, I'm saved. I'm on a transformation process. If you went to the bar and got wasted, you would feel miserable because the conviction of God would come upon you. When you're saved, sin is no longer fun. You just don't have fun anymore, friends, doing that stuff right? No, I mean, I'm just saying, okay, we got to be careful with sin because it can creep up on us. We make a series of compromises and that can wound us. Amen. But God will empower us to do the right thing. He will always help us to do the right thing. So waiting causes us to focus on character development. Here it is. Prayer and time in the word. This can help us use waiting wisely. Sometimes waiting or resistance. Now listen to this. Sometimes you can have resistance from the enemy. And you need to pray that through, okay? Not every t- form of waiting or resistance is from God. You know that, right? Sometimes we got to pray some stuff through. we got to command some stuff to go in Jesus' name. And we got to confront the spirit realm, okay? This takes discernment. It takes wisdom to know the difference. I have found in my experience, if it's something the enemy is blocking me in my life, if I command it to go or if I pray, it's going to lift. You've been listening to Carl Joseph and the Lions Unchained podcast. Carl is a minister who's witnessed God's supernatural power to save, heal, and deliver. Carl is a unique researcher who investigates current affairs, societal trends, technology, cults, and end time events, all through a biblical lens. Every Monday, new podcasts are uploaded. So stay tuned for the next opportunity to roar into victory. Check out carljosephministries.com for exciting articles, teachings, and discussion points. See you next week. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.